Riveting content, empowering your life. Welcome to The Sphere. This episode is sponsored by KOG and Company. Are your unique gifts and talents changing the world? Do you desire to belong to a community of unity? Visit KOGPassion.com to learn more about the Unleash Your Dopeness movement. Looking to advertise? Join the Sphere's vast demographic reach of thousands of people all over the world. Send an email today to advertise at thesphere.tv or call us at area code 832-772-7789. Houston Housewives of Finance. For more information on increasing your cash flow, becoming your own money manager, and to schedule your complimentary personal finance strategy, contact the Houston Housewives of Finance today at 1 844 700 4463. Welcome to Cheers for Gentlemen. I am one of your hosts, Kaylin Laws. You can follow me on all social media outlets, Senor Wapo 713. The G sounds like a W, Senor Wapo 713. I'm so excited to have uh, you guys tuning in and listening to us today. I have, again, my brother from another style, mother, very, very good friend of mine, very, very dapper gentleman himself, Mr. Brandon Montgomery. What's up, man? What's going on, man? You already know what time it is, Brandon Montgomery. Just real B-Mont on ig man that's pretty much it i don't you know send your wapo man he got it all locked on every other outlet you need so Stop just that. just ig man nothing Not special nothing special listen man you look you look you looking mighty dapper over there today I brother i feel dapper yeah I, yeah i feel dapper like we talk like we've been discussing how mm -hmm. you how you look and how you dress is ultimately going to lead to how you feel so i i feel good man i feel good this is this is my season so this is, hey, i'm dressing like it's my season i love you don't it don't want me to get started today. i love it man this is just season I, I love that man you know speaking of seasons man first of all I, again i just want to uh thank everybody for tuning in and for listening here on Jesus for gentlemen just in case this is your first time we want to kind of i want to give you kind of an overview of what this platform and this uh show is about we are talking about all things gentlemanly mm -hmm. okay so we're gonna so if you look at being a gentleman as a tapestry right, right. brandon or a quilt um it's, it's it's a bunch of different pieces mm -hmm. right within that quilt it could be a, a green triangle and a red triangle and a, and a and a design here and a different fabric there but there's a thread that reads them all together right and so in gentlemanly culture the way we're approaching gentlemanly culture today uh, the thread that's going to weave everything that we talk about is style men's style men's fashion um from from a to z and, and from z to a from what and, go ahead and and to add to that style and fashion um for those listening or watching it isn't just the clothes you wear it's the confidence that you carry uh and how you feel about yourself and how you treat others in wearing the clothes that you yeah. wear the clothes is the clothes um really is just one piece of your style of what makes you a gentleman you know so Yes. Agreed, man. Agreed. I like that vibe. I yeah, like, that vibe I like is that good. Vibe. Shout out to our producer Elijah, man. He's over there vibing out in the back yeah. uh, with us. Got the music really uh, here, here to you, young fella. And so, um, so, so we talk about style, but 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 we like to to expand gentlemanly culture, right? Right. right. Uh, into into art and, and into music and, and, and into uh, chivalry and grooming and and even uh, making sure that we talk about some community issues as well. Yeah. And before I get started, man, let, let's and, and this isn't on the show, but I, but I want to take a liberty real quick because this is our show. Yeah. Uh, and, and say a quick comment about what's been going on here in the news. Okay, man. let's let's talk about it. And so, um, as gentlemen, I think it's it's imperative. And you and I have talked about this quite significantly on the show and off the air for for years, um, for seven years or so. We've been knowing each other. Uh, it's been that long, bro. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. And so, it's important that we know what's going on in our community. It's That's important right. that we know what's going on in our country and in our families, right? And it sickens me and saddens me that in two thousand. In 17, 
um, we're dealing with some of the things that we're dealing with um, yeah. in terms of race relations, right? In terms of uh, the political climate, and the political sphere, right? In terms of how we are how we are misrepresented in so we being African American men are misrepresented in so many different genres of, of media, music, entertainment. Uh, how the narrative is spun to where you can't you can't look like I look today with a fitted on a hat to the back without. Um, conjuring up some negative feelings, you know. Mm-hmm. You have to look like how you look. Again, you look very mm-hmm. adaptable, brother. Hey, thank you, sir. Um, um, but unless you're looking like that, you know, there are some some stereotypes that go with it, you know. And it all plays out, and then it boils over um, into what happened in Charlottesville. I, I want I want to give um, my deepest condolences on behalf of the Sphere Network to the families that were impacted negatively in Charlottesville. Um, what happened out there was a disgrace to humanity. It's not a black or white thing. It's a disgrace to humanity, right? Um, that violence um, happened like that. And it, and it, re- it really incenses incens- me and pisses me off. And so I, I, I think it's a call to all gentlemen mm-hmm. uh, to wake up, right? To pay attention, um, to really love like never before. Right for the greatest of these is love. Right, yeah. Don't get me started. And so, uh, you know, it's one of those things, man. That it, 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 I condemn the actions of radical groups. I condemn. Ho- I'm not like Trump. Right. I I'm, I outwardly condemn. Right. Uh, fascists, uh, alt right groups that that go into neo Nazis, right, and and whatever other term creatively that they that they've come up with. And as gentlemen, I think that we have to be um, about our about humanity, man. About humanity, right? Yeah, it's yeah. one of those things. And, yeah. and so when you look at what happened and when you look at, you know, the comments talking about Jews when I pl- replace us and, and, and you know, uh, uh, um, you know, a- about the rally was started because of Confederate statues being removed and they want blood and soil, uh, things of that kind of, na- things of that nature, man. It's, 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 it's disgraceful and it's, it's distasteful. It's, 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 and not only that, it's, it's, what you're doing is you're dishonoring the memory of, of so many innocent people who lost lost their lives uh, only because of hate, um, because of this entitlement uh, mentality that that feels that one one is greater than the other, you know. And here's 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 the whole thing: if honor, when you honor somebody, if honor is the currency to elevation then dishonorment is the currency to depression. The opposite angle of elevation is depression. And so what he is in essence doing is, it is depressing, it is dishonorable, it is um, in some senses uh, of the scope, uh, most people say I don't understand it. Um, But at the end of the day, when we're talking about being a gentleman or when, when we're just talking about being an outstanding citizen uh, in this country that we call the United States of America, um, it, it's, it's just sad that we have to even have a conversation about somebody who is as ignorant as he is to um, the lives that were lost, to the facts of what really happened in that community on that day. Um, you know, he, he was so big about, I need the facts, I need the facts. Well, let's if you want real facts, let's go back to thousands of years why these groups were started in the first place and the mentality behind them. Mm-hmm. You know, um and if you don't stand for nothing, man, you know, he he's not standing for the country that he said he wanted to run, the people that he wanted to be uh over and bring them together and create this sense of unity. Um it's been nothing but divisiveness uh from the beginning, man. Yeah, from, from the outset, man, and, and for Heather for Heather Heyer um, Heil, uh, forgive me if I'm mispronouncing uh, her name. Again, our, our, our extreme condolences to her for losing her life. I, I read a statement from her mom, and in oh, her mom, I, I saw it today. Yeah, it was and, powerful. Her, and her mom said, "You know what? As heartbroken as she is, and as deplorable as, as the situation is, she's happy because her her daughter um, passed away doing what she loved. Yeah. And she was always, she yeah. said that her whole life, she was always that person that would fight for the unjust." You yeah. know, and so um, I think as gentlemen, we we, we can take uh, um, some cues from that from that from that situation. 
I'm from that reality and, and be like a Heather who passed away and say, listen, let's just fight for our communities. Let's fight for our families. Let's fight for our confidence. In us, it's us being a, a stylish men. Let's fight for uh, um, us knowing uh, and experiencing all that this life and this world has to offer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I totally agree with that. So listen, also, we, go uh, ahead. Uh, condolences to the to the two state troopers that lost their lives. Yeah, um, trying to take care and protect and do all that other stuff. Absolutely, so. man. Absolutely, man. It's, it's 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 you know we've we've had some dark moments here recently, and it's crazy because you know what I think you know what I think about man. We. <laughs> These kinds of things are can be in history books, and we live through it. You know, we think we think about civil rights. You know, you know, my parents, my parents are from Memphis, Tennessee, so they were in school when Dr. King was shot, and and when JFK was shot, and these mm-hmm, big mm-hmm. momentous occasions. But but we're living through times right now that are going to be that are hist- can be hist- history making and be turning points, man. And our kids, our daughters, can grow up and say, "Oh my God, I I was two or one or." Or I remember my dad telling me about that because this is what happened. This is what the climate was in the country. So, you know, we're we're, we're living history right now, man. Yeah. And and let's let's make sure that we're doing as gentlemen all that we can to fall on the right side of history. Leave, right. Leaving ahead, I was talking to somebody today. Um, a man has enough inside of him to leave his children's children an inheritance, and yep. that inheritance isn't always uh, monetary. It's monetary. Um, but the inheritance of who you are, what you stand for, and ultimately what you're willing to die for um, yeah is what you're going to leave your children and not only them but their children and, and so forth and so on it doesn't even have to be your biological children we're talking about the next generation all together so make sure that no matter what you do if, if it's just from the way you dress to the way you carry yourself or what you fight for and believe in make sure you're leaving an inheritance behind so that others will understand what it means to stand up for something great there it is so shout out to to everybody out there doing their thing and uh let's let's just let's just come together and love one another yeah all right so let's move on man let's let, let's go to to the first thing we're talking about did you know there is a um you ever heard of this guy brennan his name is elvis i believe presley um, i think it was his last name you ain't number the hound dog yeah uh-huh okay. that guy right, right. right. so Remember, maybe maybe a month and a half ago, six six eight weeks ago, um, the romp hymns came out, and, and the guys with the with the rompers and all of that kind. And of for thing. those younger guys that don't know who Elvis is, he was considered to be what the king of of rock and roll or the Something creator like of rock. Yeah, and even roll though he or, stole it anyway. I mean, Elvis. Yeah, he, he, <laughs> back in the day, for a lot of people, he was that guy. And yeah, he, he ushered wa- in a new style of music, a new style of sound, and a new style altogether. All together. I will give Elvis this. Nobody else did it. Listen, listen. listen. He was the, he was he was the, he was the originator of the of the male romper. Uh, st- wait, yeah, yeah. In popular culture, he was that guy. He was dope. I didn't uh, see guys wearing listen dude body was, suits before Elvis. Right, right, right. Dude was super dope, man. In fact, um, this portion of the show is sponsored by a dope company called KOGN Company. Oh wow! Are your unique gifts and Same talents? Way. Challenging the world, unleashing your dopeness is, is a people empowerment movement built to encourage the masses to operate outside of their fears and have the gall to recklessly pursue their dreams and passion in life. Join thousands of others as we unlock the greatness that dwells inside. Shop dope gear at kogpassion.com. That's kogpassion.com and use coupon code dope exclamation mark for 10% off of unleash your dopeness apparel. Act now. Sizes are selling out Fast. And you know what? I'm I'm gonna go ahead and say this here because you know they they're not only a sponsor but you know they're somebody that believes in pushing people forward. I am going to buy one of their hoodies. I like their hoodies. I'm gonna buy one of their hoodies and I'm gonna rock it here on this show. Let's do it. All right. I, just, I just need one other person to do that with me. That's I it. got you. I got you. There it is. We got two people all. right now. Now if we can get other people to do the same thing, we support the people that support us, man. Listen, listen. And so speaking of going back to Elvis though. You you know you're right. You know James Bond he he, he wore one. Um, uh, one I forget which James Bond movie, but but he had a, a when you say wore one, one oh romper, like yeah. a romper. But mm-hmm. but Elvis is is the most iconic, right? Um, and and some people believe that it's trying to come back on, that okay. it's trying to catch on. Well, I've seen a couple people. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, getting their rompers on. So in our in the exhibition at the O2. Uh, looking uh, at Elvis's career between 1969 and 1977 will feature 40 of his jumpsuits. This exhibition's timing is, is pertinent in menswear, uh, where jumpsuits are trying to enter themselves in and try to become staples. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. 
you know, uh, Elvis may have worn a rhinestone and, and, and gold laying oh, oh, no, no, not may. He did. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. Yeah, he did. He yeah. did. <laughs> you know, um, but, you know, a lot of designers like Mucci and Prada split top version, um, which has a stripe down the side of one leg, uh, earning comparisons to this kind of apparel are usually seen at Silverstone. Also, Alex- Alexander McQueen has an option. Um, a denim version of this, and Louis has one as well. Really, really. Yeah. So, so, so a lot of the high, high end uh, designers are trying to trying to come out with this this little romper thing, man, and they're patterning it after Elvis, right? Like, I mean, even with the adornment and mm-hmm, the, mm-hmm. The, the like, it's it's interesting. I, 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 and I these really, are all for men. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. I got to be careful in how I ask this. How you phrase it. So is it more about the glamorization of what once was, or where are we taking men's fashion with this? I think I think that this. What is their mindset you behind know, I, this? I, I think it's just trying to push the envelope. Because are they men, pushing the envelope? Yeah. Are they so because are they it. following a specific trend and trying to cater to a specific gender of no, no, men? No, 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 no. Or 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 you know. Uh, you know, with some androgyny, you know, androgyny, you know, being genderless or or, or, or gender neutral, is, I think is the cur- uh, current incorrect term. Before we jump into that, man, I want to uh, uh, talk to our Facebook Live folks really yes, quick. Sir. We ask that everybody that's on Facebook Live subscribe to our show, yes, okay, on all the major platforms, including iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, and Stitcher. Review our show on iTunes with constructive feedback. It don't always have to be good. Be constructive, mm-hmm. right? Share this Facebook Live post and the entire show with your family and friends. Donate to our mission to bring enriched and inspiring content each and every week. You can donate at this www.thesphere forward slash. I'm sorry. Let's back up. www.thesphere.tv forward slash donate. Okay. And so, you know, when when you look at uh, Brandon, well, menswear is going. Hey. It could be a response to to the acceptance uh, of tr- uh, of of transgendered uh, folks. Now, I, I'm really not sure. What I do honestly believe, though, um, is that uh, it's more so trying to just push the envelope of men's wear, pulling back something that once was would try to be inserted years ago, decades ago, in the '60s and '70s. Um, Cause you know in the seventies they had leisure suits. They called them leisure suits back mm-hmm. in the gap. You see what I'm saying? And, and that was and that was what they wore. And see, so, see here's but here's the thing. Some people will say that they're pushing the envelope of, of men's wear, while others would argue that they're pushing the envelope of masculinity. I mean, listen, I think all. And of that's them why apply. I asked the question: Where is men's fashion going today? Yeah, you, you know, know what I'm saying. And that's not a that's not a, 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 a kick in the stomach to any specific group yeah yeah group whatsoever Mm -hmm. but that's just asking a a, a simple question in the mindset behind uh the designs of current fashion and men you know as as someone who who who's a self-proclaimed fashion aficionado and and really really loves the menswear space i think it's an attempt to do something different honestly i think that's where it begins Mm -hmm. now the fallout may be what you're talking about in mm-hmm. in, in in masculinity or 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 uh, and that's not, not what we're just what I'm trying to say. Yeah, no, no, no. But what but I'm saying I'm is, but it might question. apply. Right, yeah. right, right. right. It, yeah. might, it definitely it definitely could apply. I'm not really sure. It could apply. But what I am what I am um, saying uh, because people would argue on both sides about that. Some people say like, listen, I, I've seen some of the romp some of the male rompers. I really dig. Yeah, but I can't see. It, I so, don't. I don't know. So a lot one. of the guys I know willing to wear a yeah. A lot of guys aren't brave enough. Rhine, one piece. Rhinestone. Yeah, rhinestones is, is well, but I, but I got these studs. <laughs> yeah, but that but that's not. It, it's, it ain't bejeweled. It, yeah, 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 and it yeah. doesn't snap in the middle either. You know yeah, you know. <laughs> and so, but you know, it's one of those things, man. I think it's just pushing the envelope because when you think about it, men's where we have like four pieces technically maybe seven four to seven pieces that's it mm-hmm. in terms of versatility you don't have a lot you have a jacket you have a shirt where there's pull over a button now you have pants you have jeans and you have three or four types of shoes at the end of the day that's about it you see what i'm saying yeah so, and- and so so i think it could be an opportunity to try to or, a, or an attempt rather to push the envelope a little more to try to have some diversity to try to be different right it's kind of hard coming up with this, something new when clothes have been around, you know, yeah. for and, and a there's a lot of things that we wear and accept now that at one point where where it's like, what 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 is he wearing? What's going on? Like, you know, I remember when everybody used to wear. Again, we talked about this before, the baggy shirts and the baggy jeans, and 
you know, and somebody came with something fitted, it was kind of like, what is he doing? But now that's the norm. Yeah, yeah. And so what I've also noticed is if you look at high end fashion, mm-hmm. you look at look at the top guys, what they're doing is they're starting to create clothes. It's it's called the Sigmore curve. You're 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 trying to uh, be above or be a, uh, be ahead of the curve before right. something happens. Right. And so because everybody's comfortable in this space now with the with bespoke and tailored and and all that other stuff. Now a lot of the high end brands, if you look in the magazines and stuff, they're going back to the baggy look. Yeah, the they are. Baggy jeans, mm-hmm. baggy shirts, baggy right. jackets. Right, 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 you know what right, I'm saying? Right, right, it's right, kind of right. like, wait, wait, we just got accustomed to. So I get it. I get the whole romper um, idea. Um, but I, I, that's what we do here. We, we pose the questions that some of our viewers may be. Yeah, asking, absolutely. Um, just to hit it from all sides. Absolutely, man. And, and, and you know, you talk about kind of um, where fashion was and where it is now. And there's another trend. Um, that you and I are like super fans of, and they've given it a name called athleisure, right? And so athleisure like is like athletic and leisure and loungewear yeah. put together, yeah. right? There was an article released back in 2015. Yeah, I, I pulled a, an older article on purpose um, talking about athleisure. Um, it's that one guy of looks the familiar. Yeah, they got well, you know, it's, it's kind of one of the biggest trends in fashion in the retail world today. And people wanted to know. Forbes in this article wanted to know whether or not they um. Uh, what this was a trend that was going to last or not, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And it was talking to investors, trying to say, you know, are you, should you invest in in brands that are brands that are specifically going to go towards uh, athletic apparel or um, athletically tailored apparel? Um, and and because they didn't think it would last, they said it maybe had an eighteen month window or mm-hmm, something mm-hmm, of that nature. Mm-hmm. And we're seeing that. Listen, even the high end brands are really, really. Um, 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 supporting that, right? Mm-hmm. You have with the, the 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 recent collaboration with Supreme and Louis Vuitton. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you yeah, see what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, you have traditional, traditionally um, casual brands, or even a little bit more dressier brands, such as Dockers, g- g- coming out with the DMX and and, and, and new uh, uh, versions of a- athletic apparel and a- yeah. athletic yeah. wear. But it's not just athletic wear, right? It's 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 more than athletic where it's a it, there are i have a suit that's athleisure like it's literally a suit that's uh, moisture wicking which means it pulls the sweat away mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which you know I, I could if i wore the pants by themselves it was some sneakers it would it would look like i just had on some some dope pants not not any joggers you right, see what i'm saying right, right um so you know this rise of athleisure i think is really really important because man listen it's hot in houston bro yeah dog. I, you, know, you know, my old college roommate used to tell me he think he he, he think the, uh, the devil got a house in Houston and yeah. vacation here in the summer. The heat index was 106 today. Yeah, it was crazy. It's crazy. And so when you look at, you know, trying to be fly and trying to, trying to really uh, 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 be a, a stylish man, a lot a lot of times that comes with layers, mm-hmm. like literally layers. Mm-hmm. Wearing mm-hmm. a jacket, or wearing a, you know what I'm saying, or wearing different fabrics and textiles. And you, sometimes, sometimes you just want to be comfortable. Yeah, you just want to be yeah. freaking comfortable. And so, what this brand or what this style of, of, of fashion does is it allows you to uh, not only look good, but also feel good at the same time. You, you, again, just because uh, you're stylish doesn't mean you can't be comfortable at the right. same time. And a lot of times, some of the dopest fits that I've seen on people are probably some of the most uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it looks great, but being able to move and especially with all the tailoring or even the shoes and this and that it's just like oh, i can't wear this all day mm-hmm. but now with this this style of fashion people are able to say look not only can i go to the basketball game with this but i can take my wife out on a nice date as well yeah you know and um and, and so we're talking about louis vuitton talk about supreme talk about dockers maybe you're a brand owner or mm-hmm. you have a business mm-hmm. segue Maybe you know you're a dope attorney and you need to get your 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 services marketed out there. Well, guess what? Segway. You can do it here. In fact, this portion of the show is sponsored by the Sphere. Are you starting a business and looking for a place to advertise? Do you have need to reach out to thousands of people across the world to build your brand or sell your product? If so, get product placement right here and advertising needs handled at the Sphere. We offer a wide variety of content delivery platforms, including iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Stitcher. Plus, we have a vast demographic reach within the United States, as well as modern countries across the globe. Our enriched content and inspiring dialogue, coupled with your strategic ad, is surely to hit the mark every time. Call us today at area code 832-772-7789, or send us an email over 
to advertise at the sphere.tv. Look, if you need some stuff, market it, man. You need to go and call us. Give uh-huh. us a holler. But, you know, it's talking about athleisure, man. I love that it's inserted itself fully in in into into to men's wear B, but but I, but I think that it needs we need to kind of kind of brush it off a little bit and, and let people know how to really wear it because people here at Leisure they think it's just oh you know you just wearing some sweats and a tee right I mean right. and, and that, that is part of it for sure that's definitely part of it it's it's wearing athletic clothes that's really tailored a uh, uh, great quality. Um, um, fit well and flexible mm-hmm. move with you, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. there's a way to spice it up, man. Yeah, there there's, is. there's absolutely a way to spice it up. So let me give you seven tips. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete tips. Okay. Let me give you seven tips, right? But first, before I give the tips, let's just define again. Define mm-hmm. what what it, what it what it is. And 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 athleisure is just a trend in fashion in which clothing designed for workouts and other athletic activities are worn in other settings. Simple. It's simple. So the first thing, right? Dope shoes. Now, I think when I say dope, dope shoes, I mean sneakers, right? right. You know, I, I think in order to pull off anything. That doesn't anything, necessarily mean expensive sneakers. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. You go get, again, I am a Chuck fan. I got some on right now. This, right. I'm a Chuck see fan. I have on a suit, but I clearly have on some Chucks with it. And technically speaking, that's considered as leisure. That's really considered as leisure because depending upon your work environment, you know, you, you have on a very nice suit, but you put on some nice, what we, what we like to call simple silhouette shoes, yeah. which is a truck, yeah. a truck is. Yeah. And, and, and it, it, it makes it a lot more fun. It gives it a different vibe, right? Uh, it's comfortable. You don't have to wear your hard bottoms, your double monks, or your oxfords all the time. It, 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 and it works. It really works. Yeah. So, so the number one thing is have dope sneakers, man. Yeah. Have some dope sneakers. Get you some some NMDs from Adidas or some ZXZs, or get you any kind of tubulars from Puma. You can never go wrong with Toms. No, you can never go wrong with Toms. Vans. I mean, Vans work in every situation. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. The simple silhouette, man. And number two, right? Blazers and hoodies. Now. Blazers or jackets and hoodies uh, is a Jean really jackets and hoodies are yeah, yeah. really nice. Yeah, it really is. Blazers and hoodies are is a really really easy way to really spice up the look, right? What 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 it does is layerable. Absolutely it's hot for sure. It's not a summertime look. Uh Brandon it's not even a, especially down here. It's not even a springtime look in some places. But in the winter or fall or winter is a perfect opportunity yeah. to layer and, and to and to add a different uh, level of spice to your look, right? The second one um, or the third one, rather, is joggers and button-ups. And this is one I really love, and, and, I, and I, wear, I do I do it a lot. When you wear uh, some jogger pants, joggers are the only thing joggers are are sweats, right? They're, they're, they're like track sweats, but not the but nylon. But the material is sometimes different. I've seen, yeah, nylon. Yeah. I've seen silk. I've seen, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. different, different material joggers. Right. So the joggers and sweats that you want to, or j- or joggers, rather, and button-up, you just wear a simple a simple gray or, 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 or blue or black monotone jogger with a solid with a solid button up and again it's a great silhouette right mm-hmm. um it's a fun way to, to to change up sportswear number four um a jogger some joggers button ups and a jacket yeah. yeah a blazer or an over or a top coat right again and and these everything that he's saying this is stuff that you can do an after five event for this is something that you can go to your kids game with this is something that you could take your wife out to a nice movie in. this is something you can go and meet with some business partners and uh, over coffee and, and and discuss yeah um um the future of whatever it is that you have going on right. a lot of these things they're interchangeable but they're comfortable and you look nice at the same time right absolutely you know you throw on these joggers you throw on a jacket you throw on some loafers or some slip-on shoes sometimes or something of that nature and it looks really 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 nice um, some kind of slides, right? Number five, some joggers in a polo shirt, right? That's a good way to do yeah. it too. Yeah. Really comfortable, really fun, kind of that yachting or golfing look. Yeah, uh, uh, something that you really, really <laughs> love I a lot do, of. <laughs> I, I do love to golf. <laughs> you love your yeah. golf. Yeah. Uh, um, and and with that look, the polo shirt and mm-hmm. the you know uh, some nice Sperry's, uh yeah. some yeah. shoes like that will be some top really, siders, really good. deck shoes. Yeah, yeah. for sure, absolutely. Uh, you're absolutely correct. Um, you also want to look at uh, varsity jackets and chinos, right? Um, now explain chinos for those. So chinos is just it's just, chinos are they're not slack they're, they're khakis pretty much, khakis, right? And so ch- uh, chinos are a little thicker than slacks. Slacks are generally wool, 
right? Mm-hmm. Like what you work for with mm-hmm. a suit or a business or a business look, but chinos are kind of the khaki material. Yeah. Um, a little thicker, a lot more casual, mm-hmm. so you can get away with this look. Yeah. Uh, a lot easier. Um, uh, number seven, the varsity jacket with a shirt and tie. That is a good look. It's a good look. You man. notice people uh, like uh, Chance the Rapper or different people, they'll they'll do looks like that. And it and it works. And it works every time. And they'll have the varsity jacket with a shirt and tie and some chinos and some nice vans or some nice chucks or some, you know, different stuff going on, you know, that that spices up that look. But I'll, like 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 my guy right here, it right. spices it up. But it it, it, it gives you a, another element of style that you probably wouldn't have thought of on your own. Absolutely. And what I love about uh, 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 this look is that if you like it can be a work look but but if it's not the kind of work look that you want you can always just pull off the jacket yeah pull off the jacket and then you're in a shirt and tie yeah and some, and some chinos yep. right also you know so it's one of those things that is layerable mm-hmm. um it's fun you can once you leave the job or you leave wherever you are you put the jacket back on you go get you a drink with the fellas yeah. right you take you take your lady out to, on a date and you still look really 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 nice man you're really able to to um to uh um just spice that thing up bro yeah. right yeah. Yeah. right because your woman don't want to see you wearing the same flannel shirt baggy pants and whatever it is that you were wearing when you met her just like you want your woman to evolve uh into who she's supposed to be style wise right personality wise it's the same for us we got to always make sure that especially if we're wanting to see more out of our women right be the example change your style up spice it up a little bit so in turn your wife will feel comfortable or your girlfriend or, or your mate will feel comfortable about taking some risk and trying some things on their own as Ag- well agreed man agreed man and, and, and you know we talk about take, taking risks and you're talking about um, being with your lady or your loved one your mate i think that we need to t- then we need to pause for the calls real quick and and, and and kind of give our thoughts on how to pursue that person mm. right mm. so be you've been you've been married what for three years now yeah Three years, but you but you've been together with your wife. Oh, y'all been together since over two thousand five, right? Twelve years. Yeah, y'all been together twelve. That's pretty years. good math. Yeah, I was trying to carry the one. And, yeah, <laughs> carry the good. one. Yeah, right. Okay, and so y'all been together twelve. You know, I've been married to my wife almost. Uh, it'll be nine years. We've been together ten. We've been married uh, nine, and so um, successfully married. It, and and, and there have been ups and downs. There've been oh, ebbs and flows. Uh, right. That, that that's oh, relationships. Yeah. Right. Um, it, it's all about trying to make sure that it ebb it, it flows more than it ebbs right that the good times outweigh the bad right mm-hmm. uh, and so i think that there, there there's something to be said about a lot of guys man especially when i'm talking to homeboys and i'm talking to kim folk um they don't really know how to pursue e- even i've talked i've talked to some of my elders they don't know how to pursue their mate after they've been in a relationship for so long yeah and it's tragic man yeah it's and, really tragic and, and but it's in one sense, you may say it's tragic, but you don't know what you don't know. Right. And what I'm, when I mean tragic, I don't mean in terms of this guy is doing something dumb or stupid. I mean that it, it can hurt the relationship. Yeah. yeah, and you wonder why it's not progressing. Exactly. You're you. like, yo, I'm, I'm I'm here. I'm a physical presence. She don't. I love her. Yeah. You know, you hear that all the time from the OG. Oh, especially the men that are making a lot of money. Oh, yeah. You, well, yeah, exactly. You know, they, they feel grinding. Like the money itself is like, come on, you got everything you need. I mean, and this is with kids too, because I have a son that lives in Alabama with his mom, right? right. That I that I had before I was married, um, and 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 it's the same thing with 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 kids that that you have that may not live with you or with your spouse. Um, people want your presence, yeah, not your presence, exactly. Not C-E. what you can buy them. Yeah, they yeah, want your not, CE presence. Yeah, they want yeah. your CE presence. You know what you carry, uh, uh, being with them, um, having experiences and moments with them versus okay i can just get them something and a lot of that comes from what we're talking about now just being able to continue to pursue them and that doesn't mean money spending money on them that not all the time spending time absolutely being thoughtful absolutely and so listening to this like mm, okay what you gonna do <laughs> what, what, and what so you finna heather do? i got you i'm gonna make sure he knows right and so listen let's, let's give a couple tips on how to do that man let's do that um number one and i think this is the biggest one bro is to be a student of your wife, now, now, now or, or your mate. It might even be your wife. You, you know, you, but 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 if you really are into this person, you want to be a. When I say be a student, I mean get your book out. You hear me? I mean like a PhD, bro. It's like study that person. And it's gonna feel like you are are in, in school uh, in school yeah. because you constantly learning. 
um, not only are you constantly evolving, but but your your wife or your mate is constantly um, evolving as well. And you got to have grace for the person that they're becoming in the process of them becoming that person, mm -hmm. as opposed to this ready made uh, mate that you had up in your mind. I mean, I learned that every day every year every yeah. month it's it's something new that i'm learning and because you're a student of your wife then you're able to know okay when i say this or when i do this or when i don't do this it's gonna make her yeah in turn do this right and what you're doing is you're avoiding a lot of conflict by being able to study the type of person that you're absolutely is man and know what 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 things trigger this what things excite that what you know you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. Being, don't don't get complacent with who they are you know and, and it's one of those things man when you study you want to study the the personality traits you want to study what they like and what they don't like you want to study their habits <clears throat> excuse me you want to study how they spend money how they don't spend money what kind of relationship they have uh with finances and credit and and and, and, and you know all of those kind of things and in the event that their relationship with finance isn't that great my god you might want to call the Houston Housewives of listen, Finance. Listen, we need to did, get them up here right now. <laughs> did you know that only four states in the U.S. offer financial education? 33% or more than 77 million of Americans don't pay their bills on time. 39% of Americans carry credit card debt from month to month. And 39% of adults say they don't have enough savings. Do not become one of these listen, statistics. Do not. Become. Let Houston Housewives of Finance advise you on increasing your cash flow and becoming your own money manager by scheduling your complimentary personal financial strategy. Contact Houston Housewives of Finance today at 1-844-700-4463 or email them at info at HoustonHousewivesOfFinance.com. Ask how you can participate in a complimentary financial literacy workshop near you. Houston Housewives of Finance are the new faces of the new age of financial services. So one, one tip that, that was really good for me, man, that helped me uh, when I first got married. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, again, we're talking about being a student. Absolutely. Uh, of, your, of your mate. Of your mate. And when I first got married, one of, the, one, one of my, my marriage mentors said, listen, keep a marriage journal. Mm. And, it was, it, it, and it was about what I noticed about my wife. Like a literal journal, a tablet, you know, some sort of journal that I went and picked up at Marshalls or something like that. And I would write, oh, she did, I did this and she didn't like that. Or right. she said this. I wrote, she she spent like 30 minutes talking about this thing or this subject. Okay, so I mean, she likes that. Like I, like it was it was yeah. notes. And I would review it from time to time when birthdays came or or when I felt like things were getting a little odd. I'm saying, okay, what am I, not, what am I doing wrong? Let, let me go back to my marriage journal. And it gave me something to kind of look at. Like, oh, crap, she likes this. Oh, oh that's why she got pissed off because right, right. I, I wrote this note to myself and I remember she didn't really she didn't really respond to that. Well, you know what I'm saying? It was yeah. a marriage journal. Yeah. And so um, that's one that's one tip. And that'll help you in future references when you when you may have a disagreement or you are trying to think about ways that you can spice uh, it up. Yeah, yeah. Enhance the relationship altogether. No Go doubt. back to some of the things that you saw that worked and didn't work and try to expound on that. No doubt. Number two, man. Um take on her normal roles in the relationship right um what do i mean if your wife is the one who does most of the cooking get your butt up and cook a couple times a yeah month. yeah get up early for breakfast make you some eggs and bacon my wife, for the house see his, my wife would love for me to be able to cook but you know once i found out my wife was probably the best cook i've ever had outside of, well i love you mom but my wife Listen, Heather could burn. Man. Listen, <laughs> I, I was like, what's the point of me cooking? But sometimes it's just the fact of it's just the effort. Now, I, I, I have cooked before, and I thought the eggs were amazing. Right. She thought something else. But, but that's another story. But the, <laughs> the, the point is I tried, baby. Exactly. I tried. But see, this is, that's the thing, though. It's the effort that goes into it. Yeah. It's not even about the product sometimes, yeah, that's right? Good. That's it's good. It's the to know. effort because it's because our, our mates, are, our spouses, our wives, our girlfriends, um, they're like, yo, he tried. He really tried to support me and take some pressure off of me, and, and it really, it really bodes well for the relationship, right? Yeah. Um, it, it ain't got to be cooking. It could be anything, whatever yeah. the norm is. You know, my wife is the one who bathes, who bathes, who always bathes our, my daughter and plays and washes her hair. Sometimes I go in there and I say, "Listen, I got the baby." Yeah, my wife loves when I take care. of Yeah, and, and, and I'm bathing, it. wash her hair, and water be all over the place, and shampoo all over the place because we playing. Sometimes and they a good just time. need time to themselves Absolutely. for no other reason than the same reason why we just need time. No doubt. Ourselves. No doubt. So take on those number those roles. B, what's the third place, man? Third place is if Kalen would move his uh, scroll. 
bro. Uh, I can't see what it says. So it, what it says is to provide a safe place for her. Ah, I couldn't see the provide. Provide a safe place for her. And so, um, what do I mean by that? I, I can tell you what you yeah, mean by tell that. Me. Allow her to be herself without feeling like she's always going to get critiqued and criticized. Or same thing, criticized Judged. for her natural emotions and thoughts. Absolutely. Um, because men and women, we look at things differently. It, it's oh just, my it's God. just it's innate. I look at things a certain way. Yeah. That you can ninety percent of it, ninety eight percent of it, relate to because you're a guy. And and I used to get so, so my frustrated. wife is different. I used to get so frustrated early in the marriage when my wife would you know start crying about certain things or be upset about things. I'm like, what? Is, I don't get it. Why are you? Why are you making this so deep? Or why? Yeah. But I, I you know, I, I, I do a lot of um, uh, professional development as well. And and one of the things that I say is number one, everybody is unique. Just like I, I love to celebrate maybe the way I dress and maybe the way I talk or how my delivery in a lot of different areas. And so I have to understand that the way I deliver or, or handle things, my wife wouldn't do it the same. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And and I have to celebrate my uniqueness, but also be willing to celebrate the uniqueness that she has because that brings in diversity into the marriage. And, and you're able to have a, a wide scope of how to be able to see things, mm-hmm. not just from your point of view. And a lot of times there's things that I've disagreed with my wife on and be like, why would you even think that or, or go down that road or that path? And then it come to find out she's right or or the feeling or emotion that she couldn't articulate at the time um, was something that was, wow, that, that I should have listened. Yeah. And when you're able to allow them to be themselves, you create respect in the marriage mm-hmm. because your women um, want to feel that they can be vulnerable around right. you without be like you said without being judged and Agreed, criticized man. all the time. Agree. So you know so, it's, it's important. So B man, rebound. Tell us what the fourth one is. Number four is touch her without trying to lead the sex. Now I, I have something to say about that. That that's very critical because I mean I'm just gonna be honest. We guys and every time we touch it like we oh, try to get the what you're trying to do was had. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> um, but we were in counseling one day. And uh, the counselor said, what you need to start practicing is uh, non-sexual touching. In other words, caress them, massage them, let them know th- that that you care about them. Because for me, personally, one of my love languages is, 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 is of affirmation is, is is physical touch. I love, I love... Um, when my wife rubs my back or, or just, you know, and not even trying to lead to, to, to a sexual, I mean, we can go to have you want, you, you, you but, but, you but at the end of the day, um, it just, it just <laughs> makes me feel like, man, she loves me. She cares about me. She, right. you know, she's, she's, and we're in tune emotionally right. uh, and physically. And, and that comes from non-physical touching. If the only time you touch your mate is when you're getting ready to have sex with them, I mean, it, Again, there's nothing wrong with that to me, but you need to be able to let them know um, you, you view them and respect them and love them and appreciate them so much more outside of just of sex, sex Absolutely. itself. Absolutely, totally agree. I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't say it better, man. Number five. Now, this is a this this one that might might challenge a lot of our, our male listeners, a lot of the guys. It might even challenge some of the sisters that's listening. Ask your mate how you are doing as a mate. That's big. Babe, so am I good wife? How am I doing as a husband? Babe, how am I doing as a wife? Babe, how am I doing as a boyfriend? Babe, how am I doing as a girlfriend? And make necessary adjustments once you get the answer. Don't don't be no punk, right? Don't be no little boy and don't uh, uh, get upset at her answers. But you know what that does? Because that's because that person is telling you what they need. But and where, where you could be better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what that does? That allows you to take ownership. It does. And you know what ownership says? Ownership says I care. Absolutely. You understand what I'm saying? And and when you take ownership in the responsibility of what they need, relationships aren't just one-sided. Relationships aren't just um, do what I want you to do, when I want you to do it, how I that's want you to do it. That's That's not your wife. That's your property. Man, it's a dictatorship. You understand what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. And, and you have to understand, look, either she's my wife or she's my property. Because I can't base the success of the relationship on her doing everything I want her to do, how I want her to do it. There are some things that I need to be willing to change and give up. And, I, and I've had to learn that because yeah. men, we have this, um, at it's, times, this 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 uh, uh, pompous uh, 
do what I, you know, I, I, I run it. Highway. I, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and 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 subconsciously, ego maniacal. We even, yes, we yeah. don't even realize that we're doing that. And and at the end of the day, something as simple as hey, wh- how are some areas that I can grow in this relationship? Just what are simple. some things that I can do? Because listen, we'll do we'll we'll do that at our jobs. Oh. Way quicker Preach. than we do with our with our women or with a stranger. Yeah, yo, man, you know what I'm saying? I, or, or what's your homeboy? Hey, dog, like Even how can I done that better? You'll still uh, uh, um, change how you do things yeah. to create peace in that it, situation. Whether absolutely. it's at the job, whether it's at a restaurant, whether it's in a public setting, yeah. um, whether it's at a, a family member's house, and you don't really know these people, and they yeah. get on your nerve, but you still, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I so do. I do. why not so, do that for the person you claim to love the most? The most, and you want to spend the rest of your life with. Woo wee! All right, so um, you know what they say: they, if the shoe fits, put that joke on. You yeah. don't need a shoehorn. What? What? No, what? Never what? mind. Okay, number six: be spontaneous. Hey, dude, stop being so predictable and boring. In in every area. In every area. You hear me? Okay. Look, 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 Take an interest in her interests. It's okay to go shopping with your wife. She might take three hours, but three hours with your wife is worth it, bro. Yeah. Like, because what's going to happen nine times out of ten is she's going to be like, yo, again, he tried. He actually sacrificed and he tried. I know he didn't like it. Babe, he, you don't have to come back with me again, but look, thank you for coming. Or. Because, no, because, because it's, again, it goes back to what you carry. Yeah. Showing that you care. Because, listen, go to the opera. It's okay. You, now you can pull out your tuxedo. Right, right, right. You feel me? Right. You know what I'm saying? Or, or. You know, with me, it was watching a lot of shows. My wife, you know, she... Yeah, the chick flicks and all she, of those. Not even that, man. She be on that loving hip-hop and this and that. And, you know, we, I, at first, I was like, listen, why are we, why are we even watching this? Half these chicks ain't even married for real. Then next thing you know, I'm putting my bag down like... You know what I'm saying? Like, I, why you, you got she, into it, man. I'm all in the all in the episode, like, <laughs> babe. Yeah. There ain't another one on demand that we can yeah. watch right now. Like, what yeah. you want? She like, look at you, all in. You know what I'm saying? I initially did it because I know that's what she wanted to watch, but, but then you wound I ended up, up liking it, right? So take an interest, man. Take an interest in in what in what in, in what um, she likes. And these and, are all just examples, by the way. I'm not confirming or denying that I watch. No, you confirm me. Loving you, you just confirmed it. Just want to let you guys you said know you, that. You, you knew that they were on on demand. I mean, I've <laughs> so and, and you know, once you take these, I mean, there are so many more, but we just wanted to guys, give you guys kind of an overview. Go ahead. And and another thing, if you can invest in your style, if you can invest in um, where you're going in the future, invest in your marriage. Yeah, you know, invest in your this, relationship. This weekend, we're all getting together and we're going to a marriage conference, mm-hmm. um, just so we can listen to other people who've been not only doing it a lot longer than us, but have done way more research on what works and doesn't work. And, you know, a lot of people think when you go to counseling or you go to marriage seminars that something's wrong in the marriage or what's going on with them. No, I want I want things to to stay um, in a place where even if something does go wrong, I know how to handle yeah. that issue or that situation. Yeah. So Real talk. Invest what, in your marriage. Rest, invest in your marriage. Man. And, and, and lastly, and this is because, again, this is this is our show. And, and so I can say what I want to say. Yes, sir. Um, and it should be number one, but I, but I made it last on purpose. Keep God at the helm of your marriage, Ooh, buddy. If you don't do that, and, and I, I don't want to get into it too deeply because we we're like over time. But keep God at the head of your marriage. Yeah. Keep yeah. God at the head of your marriage. And I'll yeah. say it one more time: keep God at the head of there, your marriage. There's no way, and I'm just gonna be honest. I probably would not still be married to my wife if if God was not in the center of Same our relationship. I, I, our my wife is God's representation of of His grace on earth. Absolutely. And and I know that because because of the connectivity that we both have, individually and collectively, to the Lord, um, um, with Him. And, no and, doubt. And and not only keep God in your marriage, but pray for other marriages as well. Absolutely. You never know what people are going through, and it's easy to look on the outside, um, looking in. But pray for other marriages as Agreed. well. Agreed. Agreed. Do these tips, your dating life with your wife, yeah, will be alive again. Yes, it will. Do these tips, your dating life with your wife, will be breathing and vibrant i'm telling you i'm telling you again 
and when the, and, and when you go out on these dates, remember, guys. Let's go back to fashion real quick. When you go out on, uh, you do these tips, and your wife is excited to go out with you, your girlfriend is excited to go out with you, your fiance is excited to, to, to hit the town with you. There's an easy way to always look fly. Yeah. There's one easy way. It's the perfect date night fit, right? And, and it requires just three things. Okay. Number one, comfortable. You want it to be comfortable, right? The perfect date night fit should be comfortable. Number two, it should be versatile. Right, the perfect date night fit should be versatile, uh, and number three, it should be fly. Right, and when I say versatile and fly, I, I, I mean like get you some nice jeans. Listen, uh, people always want to talk about putting on slacks and going. Like if you're not going somewhere that's formal, put on jeans, man. Put on some jeans. Get you a nice what they call a dinner jacket, yeah, yeah. a nice dinner jacket, mm -hmm. a button-up shirt, right. And some simple silhouette sneakers again, the Vans or the Chucks or the Common Projects or the or the Adidas, uh, Stan Smiths, something mm -hmm, like that, right? Mm -hmm. Because or, what or Aldo is always yeah, yeah, a, for a, sure. a win win for sure. For sure. Uh, and because what happens is if you're somewhere where you need to take the where you have to like you're at a steakhouse and they require a nice restaurant and they require a jacket, you put the jacket on. But then if you guys want to go dancing and hanging out and kicking it with and meet up with some, for a nightcap with some friends. And it ain't that serious. Pull a jacket out, untuck the shirt. You got your sneakers on. Roll them up at the ankle. Yeah. You didn't change anything. Yeah. All you did was took the jacket off and left it in the car. Yeah. Listen, you want to be comfortable. You want to be versatile. And you want to be fly. Look, we are out of time. Oh, man. It's joint went by so fast. Yeah, it did. But listen. Um, Guys, if you're not subscribing to this to this show, um, as you can see, we're not just talking about fashion. We're talking about a lot of different things. All things so gentlemanly. Even if, even if this doesn't apply to you, send it to a cousin, a brother, a friend, a nephew. So that they can be be informed on what's going on. Absolutely, man. Culture. One last thing. Yes, sir. You can keep it gangster. You can keep it gentlemanly. But always keep, keep it G. G. Till next time. Yes, sir.